Hi, my name is Bob Beachel, uh, and in this first of uh, two videos on using uh, matrices in R, I'll be looking at how to create a matrix and how to subset and uh, filter uh, different rows and columns. Now, a matrix, of course, is a two-dimensional array of data. So it's got rows and it's got columns. It's a bit like a spreadsheet, but the data has to be all of the same type. Now before I begin looking at matrices, I just want to point out a couple of things. Firstly, you'll notice that when you first start R, or R Studio rather, you have this information here telling you what version of R you're currently running. Now, if you want to clear that away, then the way you clear the console is by is using the shortcut Control L, the shortcut key Control L. As you can see, pressing Control L clears the console. The other thing you might want to do before you start running commands is just check that there are no uh, objects from the previous session that are still uh, remaining. You can do that by click checking the environment and seeing that it's empty. If it's not, then you can clear all the objects by clicking on this button here, which will, as you can see, clear objects from the workspace. OK, so let's look at how we handle matrices. Now, again, the main way in which you will uh, create matrices in R in an actual project is by inputting data into a data frame. A data frame itself is a type of matrix. But again, you can also create them manually. So the command to do this is here. It's simply the word matrix. Then in brackets, you have to include three bits of information. Firstly, a vector. Notice the C notation there, C in brackets, which of course, as we've seen, is for a vector. So we include a vector here of values. Now, these are the values that will go into the matrix. And then you specify how many rows and how many columns. So obviously, it's a three by four matrix here. And the way um, by default, M creates its matrix, is that it, it does it by column. In other words, the first... Uh, notice, of course, you must make sure you have the right number of values here. So it's 3 by 4, there need to be 12 values in your uh, vector. So by default, it will then create a matrix with four columns, three rows, and it will arrange them by column. In other words, the first column will be the first three numbers, 258, the next column will be 4, 10, 12. The third column, 7, 13, 5. And the final fourth column, 8, 11, 6. Now you can change that default uh, procedure if you want uh, with, a, uh, a, a, with a, a parameter with an additional argument to the function. I'm not showing you that here, but you'll find it in the help system. So let's run the command here to create the matrix, which I'm storing in M. So remember, it's Control Enter on Windows or Command Enter here on Mac. So that's created that matrix. Now let's print it out and you'll see that it has indeed put them in by column. So as I said, the first column will be 258, the next one 4, 10, 12 and so on. So that's created a 3x4 matrix. Let's run the three standard commands that you can um, apply to objects that I looked at in the vectors video, structure, summary, and length. Structure, strm, shows something similar to a vector. It shows that it's a numeric matrix with three rows and four columns. And the again, the indices, which are again are, are up here, start from one, not from zero. So this is, this is the, the element with the index 1, 1. This is 1, 2, and so on. Again, row comes first. And then it lists some of the values here. Now, if you remember, this is information that you can also see down in the environment panel here, where it lists the type of objects that you've got. So it's telling me I've got an a name, a variable here, an object with a name M. It's a matrix length of 12, that's the number of values in the 
total number of elements in the matrix. Here, in fact, I'm showing the object using the grid display, whereas previously in the vector uh, video I used the other one, which is list. So you can switch between them. It's the list one, which corresponds to the same thing you get here from structure. You might want to use the grid one instead. It's up to you. OK, so that structure. Now summary. What does summary give us in this case for a matrix? Well, as you can see, it gives you the same information it did for a vector, but since there are effectively four vectors, four columns in this matrix, it gives it for all four columns. So you can think of V1 standing for vector 1 or variable 1, and we get the same summary type information for this numeric matrix. Length, as we've already seen, that's just going to return the number of values, that number of elements in the matrix as a whole. So 12. Again, remember that these commands here are returning something which could be stored in a variable itself. You can store the results of the command in uh, a variable because it's returning, it returns an object. OK, so that's how we create uh, a matrix by manually, if desired. Now, as we did with vectors, let's look at how to subset and to filter to choose submatrices. Again, we're going to use a similar way as we did with vectors. We're going to use the index uh, of the elements. But of course, in this case, it's a matrix. So there's two ind indices, one for the row, one for the column. So here, I think this is obvious. This is going to return this one here, the number two, which is in row one, column one. As, as expected. Now, say we want to return just a particular column. This is how you do it here. So you put in bracket in the square brackets, what you put is a, a comma, which basically stands for all rows, and then a number two, which says column two. So it's finding column two here and all the rows. So it gives me that column. It's very important that you specify that column here to start with. So that does indeed give me column two, which is returned as a vector. Now, what about getting a row? Well, as you can see, it's just the other way around. This time we specify the row and then a column, a comma rather, to mean all the columns. So it's returning me all row one with all the columns, in other words, the whole of row one. Like that. Now, if I want to be a bit more specific, I can ask it to return just columns two to three. Notice if I put two colon four, then of course it would give me columns two, three and four. The colon stands for two, just like in a uh, spreadsheet uh, cell reference. So this is going to return columns two to three, as we can see, these two columns here. Now, again, just like with vectors, we can use conditions as well for filtering rather than just specifying specific rows or columns or elements. Um, here, we're going to return uh, rows. Notice the, the comma at the end there and the condition is here. So this is going to return rows, but it's going to be only rows where the values in column one, notice that's column one, are greater than two. This is how you can return specific rows. So I'm going to, so you have the condition here and then a comma because returning rows. So it's going to be only those um, rows where the values in column one are greater than two. So let's have a look at that. Column one greater than two. So that's those two. So it should return rows two and three here. Let's see. So I've actually installed put that into a, an object, a P of variable. So we need to, in fact, print out P here. And as we can see, it's returned those two rows. Now, similarly, if we want to return just certain columns, we specify a comma here to say that we want columns. 
and then we want only those columns where the value in row 2, notice 2 comma means row 2, so we want those columns where the values in row 2 are greater than 10. So let's have a look at that. Row 2 greater than 10, that's those two, so it should return those two columns there, 3 and 4. And there we have it. So it's return columns 3 and 4. Now this uh, way of filtering here using these conditions and uh, choosing rows with uh, this co comma that you have to put in can sometimes be a little uh, difficult to uh, to uh, understand at first. Uh, you may need to practice just to be uh, sure that you're certain how that's working.